Thank you. Um, so just to start off with, I do just want to say I have included some photographs of families that I have supported. And if it may be a trigger for anybody, please feel free to get up and um, come back a little bit later. But I really chose photos that I feel um, depict their story very beautifully and are very meaningful. So as said, I am a Somala and I'm a social worker. And I am also a birth and bereavement doula. And I support mummies who experience loss through stillbirth, through miscarriage, through a fatal diagnosis, and they need to decide whether we end the pregnancy or whether we carry to term and offer palliative care or even neonatal ICU death. Um, I also train nurses in neonatal ICU and maternity ward to support their patients uh, more fully. And I, I train bereavement facilitators um, to go and support these families as they birth their babies. But that isn't where my journey started. And I want to share a little bit about how I found this work because I really feel like it found me. I studied as a social worker, I worked as a social worker, and then I had my first child and I decided to be a stay-at-home mom. I had another three children, blessed with a big family, and it was really the birth of my fourth child that changed my path. Um, I decided to have a complete normal birth, a water birth. I used hypnobirthing techniques to help me uh, through my labor. And I just had this incredibly beautiful, calm, empowering birth experience. And I really wanted to share that with other mommies and have families realize birth can be incredibly beautiful and empowering. And so I trained to be a hypnobirthing practitioner as well as a birth doula. And this was going to be my mission, was to go out and support couples in having these beautiful, empowering births. And then one of my very first couples that I supported had a stillbirth. And she had a stillbirth at 39 weeks. And we were just waiting for her to go into labor. And I came face to face with the reality that birth doesn't always go the way we want it. And that babies die. And I had expected to be supporting in these beautiful live birth situations. And yeah, I was also facing this reality. And I'll never forget that day. My client, um, her father was very ill. So she had been sitting at his bed, supporting him and being incredibly present with him for the whole day. And she got home that evening and she just messaged me and said, I've noticed that I haven't felt my baby move today. And I'll be honest, my first thought was, well, maybe she's just been so present with her father that she's not been aware. But we, are, we play it safe. And so I said, well, go into labor ward and have baby checked, completely expecting her to message me back and say, everything's fine and we could all go to bed and rest. And at 11 o'clock that night, I got a message on my phone and it was just, my baby is dead. And the shock that I felt was immense and I could only begin to imagine what she felt. And I just, with my social work background, I just thought to myself, this mom is gonna need such ongoing support. I knew at the birth of her son, she had an incredible gynecologist. She had a wonderful midwife. So she was going to get support, but she has to go home. And there is a nursery waiting for this little boy. There is a hospital bag packed. There is a sibling waiting for his brother. And what? She's only at the beginning of this journey. What is this going to mean for her? And so I started looking for a support group because I thought being a social worker, okay, we need to find her support. And I really felt it was essential that she had a support group that was baby loss specific. And I could only find support groups that were for grief or a loss of a child, but at any stage in a variety of circumstances. 
But I really felt it important to have a specific group for mommies that had lost baby in utero or shortly after. And I found one in Joburg, and she was based in Pretoria. And I just thought, how do I ask this mom to drive at night in a grief-stricken state to the support group? And as a social worker, I'm trained to run support groups. So I thought, well, if Pretoria doesn't have one, let's start one. And so I started a support group for mummies that had lost, no matter where in the pregnancy or shortly afterwards. And I really just want to take some time to share with you what they shared with me. Because it was through this support group that I've learned how to support mummies and couples that lose because they shared so openly and honestly about where they were at and what their journey was like. So one of the main themes that came up during this time was the added trauma that these mommies experienced during their births. So they're already in an incredibly traumatic situation and then they don't feel fully supported at their birth. And so much trauma is added during the birth. So they spoke of things like feeling really rushed in to the birth process, whether that was an induction or a cesarean, that once they had received the diagnosis of maybe baby's heart had stopped or a fatal diagnosis, and we now need to determine do we end this pregnancy or do we carry to term, they felt like a lot of pressure to do it right now. And moms shared stories of how they almost went from their doctor's rooms to labor ward, induction started, birth baby, and then was like, what just happened? And the trauma was immense for them. And I think what I do want to say in defense of the caregivers is that I think many of us, it's such a traumatic situation. We want to just protect mom and dad and get this over with as quickly as possible so that they can move on. But for many families, that rushing, they just, and when we're in trauma, what do we actually need? We need things to slow down a little bit. And just to slow it down and actually be empowered to make some decisions around their birth. So they shared a lot about that. They also spoke about not being, many of them not having the opportunity to see their babies after birth. Their baby was maybe taken straight out the room and they were never offered to see their baby. They never got to hold their babies. They never had any photos or memories and also in our country, we have a law that states pre-26-week babies are considered medical waste and so are disposed of at the hospital, which means these mommies and daddies don't have access to baby's body. And so they can't get their ashes. They can't have a funeral or a memorial service. And that really impacted on their grieving and on their healing journey. And they were often not aware that that was what was going to happen when they went into hospital. And so they were highly traumatized by the fact that they didn't have this time or have access to baby. They didn't have any memories. Um, and a real also sense of no acknowledgement for their depth of grief and pain. Whether it was an early loss or later loss, things that people said to them didn't acknowledge how they felt. It was things like, you know, oh, well, at least you know you can fall pregnant. Or just try again. Or at least you didn't get to take your baby home. It would have been so much worse if you had had him and then he passed away. And so these messages just totally invalidate mom and dad's feelings. It says, I don't have the right to feel so deeply. I don't have the right to grieve. And so these mommies really shared stories of feeling so isolated and so needing to grieve silently because there was almost the sense of you shouldn't even be grieving. And they had no safe space to go to, to share, to talk about their baby. They wanted to talk about their baby. This was their little person. And they had no space to do that because I think often people don't want to talk about dead babies. 
Babies are supposed to represent new life, a new start, a new family. And now they pass. Now what do we say? What do we do? And so they felt incredibly isolated and nowhere for them to really grieve openly. So it was really through these moms that I, just hearing all this added trauma, that I just felt surely there is a way that we can support these families better. And if I'm a birth doula, can I not support in a stillbirth situation where the trauma seems to be so much? How do we minimize that trauma? How do we reduce the regrets that these families have? And so I did a training and I studied to be a stillbirth doula. I then started practicing in South Africa, but I really just had this realization that an overseas training, it's so different in South Africa. We have different laws, different hospital protocols. We have different resources. And so I implemented the, a South African-based training. And so we, I train bereavement facilitators across the country. And we support families that experience loss. And I just want to share a little bit about how we do that. So um, we support in early loss, in stillbirth, in situations where maybe mommy's water's ruptured and they couldn't stop the labor, but baby's too small to survive outside the womb. Um, in neonatal ICU deaths, as well as families that receive a fatal diagnosis or a life-limiting diagnosis and are now faced with the impossible decision of do we end this pregnancy, a baby we desperately wanted, fall out of love and protection of this child, or do we carry to term and offer palliative care? And so with these families, they can come and sit with us and in a safe space, without judgment, we sit with them and give them the information that they need. What information do they still need in order to make their decision? What support is available to them, whichever way they birth? And we actually draw up a birth plan with these families because these families are still birthing their babies. It may not be the birth they imagined, may not be the birth they'd hoped for, nor the outcome that they'd wanted, but they have to still birth their baby. So how do we do that in a way that can be still beautiful and meaningful in amongst the heartache and the heartbreak? And so we go through with them, what kind of birth do you want? What do you need to help you as a couple grieve your little one? Because you're going to meet them and have to say goodbye to them at the same time. And how can we support that? So we make sure, do they want to see baby? And we facilitate them seeing baby if they want to. Do they want to hold baby? Do they want family members to come and view baby? Grannies, grandpas, aunts, uncles, siblings. Do they want to gift baby something? So even a soft toy that maybe they want to keep with baby. And when baby goes to the funeral home, do they want that soft toy back as part of their memory box? Or is that a gift that they want to have go with their baby? We encourage them to name their baby, especially in earlier losses where they haven't yet named baby. We encourage them to do that because what does a name do? It acknowledges you exist. You are a person. You are my son. You are my daughter. And so we can get them to name their babies. Is there a special blanket they want baby wrapped in? A special outfit that they want? Would they like any religious ceremony that would be important for them as a family to have so that they can say goodbye in the way that they need. And so these births can be incredibly beautiful and empowering to this couple and it helps them with their grieving process. I'm going to show you a few photos quickly of some of the families we have supported. And that was um, a family who had chosen to end a pregnancy because baby had multiple life-limiting issues, and mom and dad got time with baby. They get to drink him in. You know, with our live babies, when they're born, we look at their little ears and their fingers and their toes and their nose. They get given the same opportunity because this is the only time they're going to get to see their baby. Take it in. Whose big toe does he have? Oh, look, it's dad's. 
So we spend time with them and we help facilitate the viewing process. That's grandparents, sorry. Grandparents coming in. And all of them getting to have time with this little grandchild to meet him and to say goodbye to him. We also facilitate memory making because we know this is the only time that the family are going to have. So we facilitate a lot of photographs because in the support group, that was one of the number one regrets we heard was that we didn't have photos or enough photos. So we take beautiful photos um, that they can keep as part of their memory and it helps them, you know, in trauma, we don't always hang on to all the memories. And after a while, I can't quite remember what his chin looked like or his nose. They then have the opportunity to go back and have a look. We do handprints and footprints. If baby's got a lock of hair and mom and dad would like us to, we can cut off a little piece of lock of hair that they can keep as their memory box. So we just help create memories for the time that they do have and that they can ha hold on to afterwards. There you can see mom and dad chose to give her a little toy. They gifted her that. And then we incorporate that into the, the, the photos. And they're in more full-term babies, if there is an outfit that they would like their baby to be in, we make sure that that happens. What I want to say when it comes to the memory making is that we work alongside Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep, which is the most incredible organization started in America. And they do remembrance photography. And they will actually, our bereavement doulas facilitate uh, the photographer coming in. It's professional photographers who come in and take beautiful photos like you've seen. Um, and it is kept for mom and dad so that when they are ready, they can access the photos. And they do it for free. So it's free service. They come in, they take the most beautiful photographs, and it's gifted to the parents. I think our heart really as bereavement facilitators is, like I said, to help families reduce the trauma and minimize the regrets, as well as to help them acknowledge that their baby existed. Their baby is a person. This baby is still part of their family. And with this real sense of isolation that these families feel, that they need to grieve silently, myself as Mama Nurture, now I lay me down to sleep, and Sonia Smith Funeral Group, we decided to start the Walk of Remembrance, which was just another way for families to have the opportunity to actually stand up and honor their babies. And so once a year in October, in the International Pregnancy Loss and Baby Awareness Month, we ran a walk of remembrance. We did the first one in Pretoria. Last year was in, well, yeah, last year was in Joburg. And it's an opportunity for families to come, mommies, daddies, grannies, grandpas, siblings, we've even had dogs, come on the walk of remembrance and they're walking in honor of their babies. They are asked to bring photographs of their babies if they have, uh, a scan if they have, and if they don't have those, we have a blackboard that we write baby's name on. And we actually take a photograph of the family with them holding their baby's photo or name or scan. And this just gives them the opportunity to say, you are part of our family and to honor their babies. So I just want to show you some of the photos. These are some of the families that came. They went to, they actually did the shirts themselves with a picture of their baby on. There's us actually going on the walk. They could bring photographs that we put up. And you can see it's mommies, daddies, grannies, grandpas, everyone coming and walking in honor of their little babies. So there's. So just to end off, I think what I, I want to just say is that each of us play a role in helping these families feel less isolated and more supported. 
And as professionals, those of us who are professionals working with infertility, working with mommies that are in pregnancy, we can be that very first person who acknowledges their baby as a baby, the depth of their grief and their loss, and say it's okay to grieve and give them that space and put them into contact with the resources that can support them. And as family and friends who maybe know somebody who has lost or have a family member who's lost, we can provide that safe space for them to talk about their babies and to ask them about the hopes and the dreams that they had for that baby. Ask them where they're at, give them that safe space. And we can stand together and say, we remember your babies too. I'd like to end off with that. Thank you.